Today in the news, it's all about AMD's newest announcements. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Ever since AMD released the RX 6000 series of GPUs, there's been one thing on my mind. AMD, when is your comeback for DLSS? And sure, they did say that they had something in the works, but in the last six months, all we got were things like its name, which is Fidelity FX Super Resolution, the fact that they are working on it, of course, and the uh, fact that they want to wait until they can roll it out to everyone and everything at the same time. So consoles, desktop, and laptop. So yeah, it was radio silence until today's presentation. And now we finally have more juicy information on it. First, compatibility. So AMD wants to keep it open, just like the rest of Fidelity FX. So not only will it be available for consoles and Navi GPUs, but it will also be available for AMD GPUs going as far back as the 500 and Vega series. Honestly, I think it might go even further back, but we won't know until we test it. Oh, and since it's part of GPU open, it doesn't stop there. It's also compatible with Nvidia GPUs and Intel IGPs. Heck, AMD even showcased the performance difference with a GTX 1060, and it still got a huge 41% bump in quality mode. So that's pretty cool, but what about the performance itself? Well, they say that on average, FSR can boost the frame rate by 2x when it's in performance mode. And in some cases, it even blows that average through the roof. In Godfall, for example, AMD shows that with performance mode enabled at 4K epic settings and with ray tracing enabled, you can potentially triple your FPS from 49 to 150. That's insane. So I just mentioned performance mode, but obviously there's other modes. It has four different quality settings to choose from called ultra quality, quality, balanced, and performance. Now, this doesn't mean that all the modes will be available in every game. Just like DLSS, I expect that some games will have an on and off switch for the feature, while others might spew out a couple of options for you to choose from. And lastly, on the subject of FSR, how do they do it? Well, all I know is that they're using spatial upscaling algorithms. I know that Epic has been using spatial upscale algorithms for a while now, and it's available on the Unreal Engine, so I'm guessing that it's something similar, probably developed hand in hand with Epic's TSR, which was uh, announced some time ago. For example, right here, that's from the Unreal Engine 4.29. To me, FSR was definitely the most important thing during this presentation. I mean, think about what you will be able to do with your APUs and even your Intel IGPs. But of course, there was also the Radeon 6000M series that were part of the presentation. Three GPUs were announced. Starting with the 6800M, it's basically an RX 6700 XT. It has 40 compute units for 2560 stream processors, 40 ray accelerators, a game clock of 2300 megahertz, 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and of course, an infinity cache of 96 megabytes. Going down to the 6700M, we get something interesting. It's 36 CUs, and it of course has 36 ray accelerators for 2304 stream processors. It has the same game clock. It has 10 gigs of VRAM this time, and the infinity cache is actually reduced to 80 megabytes. And lastly, there's the 6600M, the little baby, the, the child. It has 28 compute units and ray accelerators for 1,792 stream processors, a lower clock of 2,177 megahertz, eight gigabytes of VRAM, and a measly 32 megabytes of infinity cache. It's going to be interesting to see how that could affect its gaming performance. Now, each of them are targeted at a specific resolution for gaming. The 6600M is targeted for 1080p gaming at 100 FPS, 6700M for 1440p at 100 FPS, and uh, the 6800M for 1440p at 120 FPS. And in terms of power configs, the 6600M can be configured at up to 100 watts, the 6700M at up to 135 watts, and the 6800M at 145 watts and above. 
And yeah, it definitely can go above that as uh, we've seen it reach 175 watts during testing. Honestly, they look like quite capable laptop GPUs, but it's going to be interesting to see how they compare to Nvidia's offerings in real testing since, well, you know, these charts were made by AMD. The 6800M and 6600M should be available right now, so it's shipping now, but the uh, 6700M will be available, quote, soon. And lastly, for the presentation, we had CPU news. We finally got APUs, and yes, they'll be available for retail purchases. They're called, and we already knew that, the 5700G and 5600G. Now, we already know all about the 5700G, as it's been leaked all over the internet and even reviewed a couple of times, so I'll just leave the slide here. But look at the 5600G. It's six cores, 12 threads, it has seven compute units for uh, the Vega GPU, and honestly, with uh, FSR, those APUs might uh, keep you satisfied until GPUs become available. And the price, despite these APUs coming pretty late in the life cycle of Zen 3, the price is pretty good. The 8 core 5700G is going to be $359, which is a good $90 under the 5800X, and it kind of matches its performance according to uh, the reviews that are out, although those are bootleg reviews. But, anyways, then you have the 5600G, which is going to be. 259 that's 40 bucks under the 5600x and you get a gpu it could become the new value king i mean it's cheaper than the 5600x and i don't think it trails behind by that much so yeah let me know what you think about those uh, apus down below I, i'm kind of curious to see if you would choose that over another cpu simply for the price so that event was interesting. Loads of stuff has been released and now you know how much I want FSR to finally come out. In any case, that's pretty much it for the news guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories or uh, of course FSR. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.